Uh, we do not yet as a society have a mitigation strategy that allows us to be doing in-person learning without a high degree of chaos and unpredictability. Specifically, cases per 10,000. What does that mean? So um, if the big 10,000 looks like this, and we're talking about three cases per 10,000, that would be very low, right? We're in the zero to 10 count. And those three cases per 10,000 would, you know, be, if there's 10,000 dots in here, those three little cases, I'll just, I guess I'll draw them as squares. Those three little cases here uh, would be here. And if they happen three per 10,000, you can count them up, you can look for them, you can find them, and then you can probably figure out how to contain them, right? What we're talking about countywide is actually, we're still around 20. And so when you start to imagine 20, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, geez, here we go. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. You start to see, you get the idea that if all of these are bouncing around in your case, in your circle of 10,000, it becomes harder to track one down, contain it, and then figure out how to make sure that everyone can keep going about their business, but your 20 or so cases per 10,000. What you're doing now at this point is you're treating or containing the people when they report it, but you don't know who else they came into contact with. And so we have about a thousand people in our community. We've got about 800 students, about 120 staff. I'm just gonna round it out so it's easy to count. And so when you hear that there's about 20 cases per 10,000, uh, well, I'll just go to my decimal points. And um, what, what I know about that is that if you, say, divide your 10,000 by 10, and you've got 1,000, that's about the same size as our school. And your 20 cases per 10,000 actually turn into how many cases at Great River School? Well, about two. And that doesn't seem like a huge deal unless you start to do the consequential figuring on what happens if we are going to school together, and there's about a thousand of us in this community, and on average, statistically, I can say that our community is affected uh, accurately by the statistics you read in the newspaper. So when you read, say, that 7% of students experience a thing, it's probably um, true that at Great River School, you've got about 70 kids who are, oh, excuse me, probably about 42 kids who are experiencing that thing, right? If you read that 50% of all families experience a thing, it's probably true that about 50% of our families experience it. And so when you have 20, say one cases per 10,000, whoo, so many zeros, say in, um, I think it was, it was one of the seven counties this past week had that. Uh, at Great River School, you're talking about two per, per, per 1,000. And that's okay, we could probably, hear from this person who might say be in ninth grade and this person who might say be in second grade. Uh, in fact, this is last week's picture of who we heard from that was either exposed to or may have tested positive for COVID-19. And so because we're in distance learning now, these two people don't stop anyone's learning. If we were not in distance learning, we would have to then take the whole corner of the pie that ninth grader touched and have them all stay home for two weeks immediately. And then we would have to say, well, are there other adjacent areas of that pie where that person actually may have also been in contact? And what we also know, both from anecdotes and from data from other schools, is that what's likely is if we have this part of the pie stay home, there's a whole other third of the pie, which I will um, draw with lines. These are cautious people. These people say, oh, there was a case at school. Let's well, think we're just gonna stay home for a couple of days and make sure there weren't other cases. And so what you end up looking at is two per, ten, two per thousand means that at any moment, a quarter to half of your students could just go home for two weeks. And so we got to jump from whatever we were doing back in distance learning. And then we didn't even talk about how we probably have another case at school and it's probably in a different area. And so the same effect starts to happen. And so if you think about the protocol from the CDC and Department of Health in Minnesota is that when you have a person who is tested positive, anyone who's in close contact with them should be on a 14-day quarantine and you don't test out of that quarantine. So Holly and I could have seen that person at our imaginary daily school and said to ourselves, 
oh, geez, okay, then we'll go get tested. Well, actually, you got to wait five to seven days for that test to be accurate. So half of our 14 days are spent waiting, and then we could still go get a test. And then because the tests are not 100% accurate and we're really still trying to mitigate and slow the spread of this disease, the Department of Health still tells Holly and I when we get our test, if you've been exposed in close contact, still stay quarantined for another week after this test and make sure you don't get new symptoms. And so 14 days in a school year of 168 days starts to add up real fast if you're looking at consequential and impacted people from two cases per thousand, right? So what I've been saying is we have to be at or below 10 in all of the counties for a sustained amount of time before we're even going to imagine going back in person. And that's because what we've done is we've taken all of the impacts from these cases and through our distance learning model, what we've actually said is, that's okay, you all stay home. And in fact, because you're already home, your cases can be contained and handled right in your family and nobody else loses out on learning because of that. And then I just want to remind folks that we do have a learning community. And I've been saying for several years that we are not a customer service organization. And it sometimes gets laughs and sometimes gets funny looks. But what do I mean by that? What I mean is we're not vending something at a marketplace. And our learning community is only as strong as, frankly, your buy-in to that concept that we have to be in a community. And so we're right now in one of the hard parts of being in a community where in this pie chart that represents our about 1,000 people in our community, and right now um, when I name 1,000 people, it's, it's about 930 people that are on campus on any given day in a normal school day. Uh, and not counting any of the parents or any of the caregivers or any of the extended family members who live in these households. Uh, my rough estimate on the number of people impacted by the learning community every day, if you include caregivers and parents and uh, people who live in the same house as the students who are here. And I'm also including dual household families. So, you know, your kid, uh, I as a kid might go to one household on Tuesdays through Fridays and a different household on Fridays through Mondays or something. In any case, counting all of those folks, uh, I know that our community impacts, and I'll put it over here, somewhere near about 2,800 people. And so that's a large burden of responsibility as an organization to make sure that we're not responsible for the vector of this disease going to any of those 2,800 people, right? So a third, roughly, of our families said that they're gonna stay home really out of caution all year. And the state made very clear, and we are in fact happy to keep our learning community together. A third of our families are doing distance learning no matter what we declare all year and many states are struggling with this and many counties in the state of Minnesota are struggling with this is that even if we were in this, even if we were in in-person learning right now forget these two cases these people again about a third of our pie and that's kind of a small third I guess I guess don't let me cut pie when we share a pie Holly <laughs> well it depends on which one you get uh, it's true. That's true. Yeah, I'll split this in half. I'll take this piece. You take that one. Uh, a third of our families are, in, are, are committed to distance learning for the year. I will also then share that about half of our families, and I will mark those families with dots over here, said that they really like to come back in person, but very specifically, they're cautious and not super trusting about whether or not it's safe to come back in person. And so this is the half of families that I'm hearing at other schools who are either in hybrid or in person. When there is a case reported, these families want to do distance learning for a couple weeks. And so they want to go back and forth, right? And then remember, we're in a learning community. So um, again, oh, and this half is just a little small. We, we do have a good portion of families who need a place for their students to be every day. And so if you haven't been um, sort of paying attention outside of your sphere of your family, you may have missed that currently at Great River School, we are holding this learning community intact by welcoming in-person learners on campus at our SRC and by really focusing our licensed teacher time on providing the highest quality distance learning we can provide and then serving the people here who are still tentative through distance learning, serving the people in person who we can, and frankly, 
again, I've used this metaphor a few times, but it may be less like a metaphor and more like an actual description. This is a storm. I think a storm can be defined as uh, an interruption to your normally planned event. Um, it can be described as um, a time of great change and tumult. It can also be described as a huge transfer of time and energy between you know, one, one way uh, and state of the environment and another. And so um, when we're talking about the cases per 10,000 and given those reports, I guess I wanted to just invite everyone to do their decimal trick and realize that when the state of Minnesota gives these um, zero to 10, uh, I, I, am I writing this too small, Holly, or can you see them? No, it's good. It's good. Okay, great. 20 to 30, I think 30 to, I can't remember if it's 30 to 40 or if it just jumps to 50, but 40 to 50 and 50 plus. Um, what you can what you can imagine is that you do the decimal trick here, and that zero to ten means zero to one cases in the greater river school community. Ten to twenty means one to two cases in the school community. So on and so on, using the decimal trick of just moving removing the zero, right? In fact, maybe that is a more accurate and dramatic way of doing it, right? So um, in the great river school community, these case counts per ten thousand, it's pretty easy to do the math and say, well, what would that mean for our community? And what it means is the state has told us, if you think you're gonna have more than five cases in your community, distance learning. And what I know about the vectors of this disease, the communicability of it, and then what we have to do, if we have one case, it doesn't take long to get to five cases. And so I just wanna report back that we have successfully used our safety protocols, even just this past week, for students who are on site at the Student Resource Center. Remember, it's about maybe 20% of our students total are in the resource center uh, throughout the week. Our students on site, we have um, one student who is definitely exposed to a relative who tested positive, and we were able to close down part of the resource center, respond and have that student get a test. That student actually tested negative. They are still quarantining, but that negative test means that we are fairly confident, like medical conditions, uh, doctors, uh, epidemiologists have all been taken into account and all of those perspectives have informed us that if that student tested negative, it's likely that they weren't communicable when they were on campus. And so we were able after just one day of being away to bring everybody back on campus. Now, what I thought to myself is that affected the life of about 14 students. But if we were in person learning and we had to do that, that could have easily affected the life of about 125 students plus about 35 staff. And then we would have basically been on hold for a day and we just aren't ready yet as a society or a school to jump into distance learning. But when you see these case counts, think about them as this many counts in the Great River School community. And what we're aiming to do is we're aiming to be in a place in which our mitigation is so successful that we can in fact be in distance learning. And we know the difference between mitigation and perfect, uh, oh, sorry, we can be in in-person learning. Um, and we know the difference though between mitigation and prevention. And what I would want is as we draw the graph the state of Minnesota gave us, is that as we say, go from distance learning um, to another model. Um, I can tell you that when you hear the uh, big districts say they're gonna decide whether or not to go in person, um, what, oh, I made that error the wrong way. Uh, what they're really deciding is whether or not they have enough staff to move from distance learning to another model. And so we are working closely with our staff. Um, I just wanna say it is not heroism, but is in fact a deep, sense of, I think, responsibility and an understanding of what keeps our current in-person SRC, the School Resource Center, right? The School Resource Center right now is providing some in-person support. And so in many ways, we are practicing how to best do this in-person model, but we're only able to do it safely and securely on campus because we have about 20% of the students there. And so we can learn from that and know how to do it best. It's informing how we can get to there, but especially with case counts up in the 20s or in the high teens, um, I know what that means for our small community school is that we're likely, because we're drawing students from so many different areas also, um, to really have to take care to know how we can respond. And the way that students and staff and families right now get COVID tests back is too unpredictable to be able to do an in-person model for everyone well. But everyone, can learn through distance learning, and we're learning how to do it. Teachers are still learning how to do it. Students are still learning how to do it. 
it's, um, you know, it's a low bar to say it's better than it was in April. <laughs> but uh, it's also, I think, something to take into account that we're living through a global pandemic. And the school is providing right now, I think, a model in which what it looks like is sometimes meeting the needs of a community means that everybody has to compromise a little bit on what's ideal for them. And so that sense of shared ownership is that what we're owning together right now is the safety for every community member. And what we're sacrificing a bit right now is that in-personness that I saw, you know, many news reports over this past summer about folks all over the country who didn't want to sacrifice their in-personness and cause a, a bit of discomfort in order to protect the most vulnerable among us. And so, you know, there's, there's many things to be said about it. Um, I'm not interested in moralizing about it, but I do think that the lesson that our children and frankly, the adults in our community, including me, can learn from this experience is that sometimes caring for those who are most vulnerable among you means it takes you a long time to make a decision. And it also means that you don't get to do what you want to do in the moment. And it probably means if you feel really sure about a decision, it's even good at that point to pause and ask three other people what they think, just to really make sure you know what you're doing. And so, um, so there were a few questions because I think the city of St. Paul and St. Paul Public Schools, and then I also think that um, Minneapolis Public Schools, there's been some news about whether or not they're gonna do a hybrid model for their first and second graders or something like that. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna over the next month work with uh, both volunteer staff and students and parents and uh, family members who over the summer came together to talk about um, communication, safety and health, uh, pedagogy and student support. And we're gonna be reconvening those um, design groups and those working groups over the month of October uh, to do our quarterly review of what's working, what could work better, what's not working, what can we change? Um, and then specifically also then to be looking at the model that we're using. So I'm confident right now though, uh, I know the first date to look at our models and whether or not we're going to change is put on the calendars mid-October. I'm confident that we'll still be in distance learning through mid-October, and I'm also confident we'll be in distance learning um, into November at least while we look at both how these rising case counts in the state of Minnesota come up. And then it's, it's already started in terms of cold and flu season. So, you know, a runny nose, a cough, a sneeze, uh, a feeling of tiredness um, are all now a high degree of sort of concern, whereas before we used to just call that October. And now, now we call that, what do we have to do? Do we have to quarantine? Do we have to set, what do we have to do? And so um, as we live through that now, uh, I just think the, the way that we can be secure and predictable is to stay where we are in terms of distance learning, but also to know families, if you uh, need an in-person setting and need social interaction for your kid, uh, please let us know if you're interested in the Physical Resource Center, because that's something we can do, too. Okay, so there's 30 minutes. Uh, improvise a bit because of the technological downsides, but this is technology. Writing, the written word, that's technology. Um, my children are inspiring me with a handwriting. They're doing, we're doing daily handwriting, and so I'm, I'm just noticing. I'd like to practice my cursive a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs>